Mitral stenosis is a condition characterized by obstruction of blood flow across the mitral valve from the left atrium to the left ventricle. The mechanical obstruction leads to increases in pressure within the left atrium, pulmonary vasculature, and right side of the heart. The mitral valve is an atrioventricular valve, separating the atria and the ventricle. The tricuspid valve is also an atrioventricular valve. The mitral valve is made up of two leaflets. The normal area of the mitral valve is 4 to 6 cm squared. During diastole, which is when the ventricles fill, the atrioventricular valve are open allowing the blood to flow from the atria to the ventricle. During ventricular systole, the mitral valve closes, allowing blood to be ejected from the aorta into circulation. The normal cardiac and pulmonary circulation pressures are important to know. As you can see within the aorta, which is the blood pressure pressure, is about 120 on 80 millimeters mercury. The left atrial pressure is 6. Narrowing of the mitral valve, as seen in mitral stenosis, to less than 2.5 cm squared will impede the free flow of blood between the left atria and the left ventricle. This causes an increase in left atrial pressure. The increase in atrial pressure is required to maintain outflow and adequate cardiac output of the heart. When the mitral valve becomes significantly narrow, less than one centimeter squared, this is critical stenosis, critical obstruction. At this stage, the atrial pressure is at least 25 millimeters mercury in order to maintain that same cardiac output. However, in mitral stenosis, as left atrial pressure increases and the left atria continues to dilate, blood will pull backwards, causing pulmonary hypertension. You can imagine blood pulling from the left atria to the pulmonary circulation, causing pulmonary hypertension as well as pulmonary edema. These changes mimic left-sided heart failure due to the pulmonary edema and pulmonary hypertension. But in reality, the left side of the heart, at least the left ventricle, is functioning normally in mitral stenosis, and cardiac output can be maintained. As left atrial pressure rises, pulmonary hypertension occurs, which can lead to pulmonary regurgitation as well as tricuspid regurgitation, and then secondary right-sided heart failure. Right-sided heart failure will cause pressure to increase in the venous circulation. So all that blood returning to the right side of the heart can pull backwards, leading to a tender enlarged liver, and then subsequently portal hypertension and ascites, and peripheral edema. Left atrial pressure and the dilatation of the left atria specifically can contribute to atrial fibrillation, as well as stasis of blood in the area. Stasis of blood increases the risk of thrombus formation and then systemic emboli, which can lead to a stroke. The etiology of mitral stenosis is many, however, rheumatic fever is the most common cause, which will then can lead to rheumatic heart disease. Rheumatic fever is caused by streptococcus pyogenes, strep throat. Antibodies are then produced. However, unfortunately, there is molecular mimicry between the heart valves and the M protein of strep pyogenes, and this causes a cross-reaction and subsequent rheumatic heart disease. Carcinoid syndrome is another cause, and this is due to carcinoid tumors, which is normally associated with tricuspid valve disease. Congenital mitral stenosis is another cause, as well as rheumatoid arthritis and systemic lupus erythematosus. 
Other rare causes include Fabry's disease, a rare inherited disease caused by deficiency of an enzyme called alpha-galactosidase A. Whipple's disease, a rare systemic infectious disease caused by the bacterium Trophorema whipple. And this can cause vegetations in the mitral valve leading to stenosis. The clinical manifestations of mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis usually presents with exertional dyspnea and or a decrease in exercise tolerance. There can be atrial fibrillation, which would present as palpitation or a thrombotic event, such as a stroke. The person may also have symptoms of left-sided heart failure, orthopnea, paroxysmal dyspnea, and fatigue. Right-sided heart failure symptoms and signs is more specific to mitral stenosis and includes peripheral edema. Clinical examination. In the precordial exam, there is a tapping apex beat in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. There can be a left parasternal heave, which indicates right ventricular enlargement. On auscultation, you can hear an opening snap, and this is caused by opening of the stenosed mitral valve and indicates that the leaflets are pliable. Following the opening, there is rumbling, low pitch, mid diastolic murmur. This is heard best in the left lateral position on expiration. The murmur is louder by increasing flow across the valve, so performing sit-ups or jumps. Also, there is a loud first heart sound, which is the closing of the atrioventricular valve. Remember signs of pulmonary hypertension, a loud P2 over the pulmonary valve, and right-sided heart failure. So there is a distended neck veins, increased uh, jugular venous pressure. There can be ascites as well as peripheral edema. Remember also signs of left side heart failure. There may be coarse crackles. Malaflush is caused by reduced cardiac output state with associated vasodilation in the face. Clinical signs or clinical markers of severe mitral stenosis include an earlier opening snap, increasing length of the murmur itself, signs of pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary edema, something called graham steel murmur, which is a sign of pulmonary regurgitation, low pulse pressure. When someone presents with what looks like a malaflush, think about other differential diagnoses as well including hypothyroidism, cold weather can cause vasodilation in the face, carcinoid syndrome, systemic lupus erythematosus causing the lupus butterfly rash and polycythemia. The differential diagnosis of a mitral stenosis murmur, so what we're talking about is that mid-diastolic rumbling murmur, are three things. The first is severe mitral annular calcification, which causes functional mitral stenosis due to a reduction in the annular size and fibrocalcific changes of the mitral leaflets. Left atrial myxoma, which is a benign cardiac uh, tumor that occurs most frequently in the left atria and can present with symptoms similar to mitral stenosis. And the last is core tria triatum, which is a division of the left or right atria by a membrane that may cause obstruction to flow. And so investigations for a suspected mitral stenosis, an ECG will show bifid P waves, which indicates left atrial enlargement or dilatation. An ECG may also show atrial fibrillation, an irregular, irregular heart rhythm. A chest X-ray may show a double right heart border, which indicates an enlarged left atrial size. There may also be pulmonary congestion and prominent pulmonary arteries, indicating pulmonary hypertension. Echocardiogram is for diagnosis as well as to assess severity of mitral stenosis. Coronary angiogram can also be used to evaluate for coronary artery disease.
Treatment of mitral stenosis include pharmacotherapy, and there are four main medications. The first is anticoagulants, including warfarin. Warfarin is the anticoagulant of choice for patients who have mitral stenosis. And this is specifically to manage atrial fibrillation, as well as reduce the risk of systemic embolization. Diuretics, such as fruzamide to manage fluid overload, antiarrhythmic agents in the setting of atrial fibrillation, and finally antibiotics, specifically prophylactic antibiotics to reduce the risk of infective endocarditis or joint infections in those who have a background of rheumatic fever. Interventions for mitral stenosis include percutaneous valvuloplasty, where they essentially put a balloon in between the mitral valve to dilate it. Open or closed commissurotomy and mitral valve replacement, which can be mechanical or bioprosthetic. So in summary, mitral stenosis is where you have obstruction of blood flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle. It causes a mid-diastolic murmur, and the main cause is rheumatic heart disease. Thank you.